The EFF and Unilever South Africa yesterday reached an agreement bringing an end to four days of protests outside Click's branches over a racist advertisement for Tresemme hair products. Now Unilever has agreed with the EFF that the ad depicting black hair as damaged and dry and white hair as fine and normal was racist and offensive. For a reaction to this, I'm joined by Lovelyn Nwadei, a social justice strategist. Uh, lovely to speak to you, Lovelyn, this afternoon. Uh, perhaps let's talk about a definition. When we talk about social justice, what exactly are we talking about? And if we could just contextualize this into the clicks EFF uh, debacle that has been raging in the country. Mm. Thank you so much, Tommy. So I think when we talk about social justice, Essentially, we're talking about what it means for us to do right by each other. And specifically in this context, I think it's helpful for us to focus on what is the harm that was done and what would be a just and a fair way of repairing that harm that was done. So for this discussion, I think that's how we need to talk about what social justice is. What would it mean for us to repair the harm that's been done in a way that is fair, right, in a way that actually meets the, the, the same amount of, of harm that was done. Now, so go ahead, Lovelyn. Oh, no, so I was just going to say, in terms of how we're going to evaluate what the EFF and Clix and Unilever have come to a conclusion about, I think that's the test we need to apply. So, has the agreement, so I saw the, the pads that are going to be given, I saw the 10 days of testimony being off the shelves, um, does that agreement really match the harm that's been done, given the nature of this current, current uh, um, mistake or mishap or oversight? Does that solution really match what's been done? And that's the debate I'm interested in us having. And, and who determines what is equitable reparation in this type of instance? Who determines that this is enough? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair question, Tammy, because in this case, obviously, the people who we've seen taking action um, were a, a mixed group of people, right? So the EFF is a political party, and they were enraged enough by this that they decided to take the steps that they've taken. I hope that in this case that it was uh, that the voices of black women were represented at the table when this negotiation was being made. So obviously I, I wasn't in the room, you weren't in the room. We don't know who was making the final <laughs> negotiation on the decision. But I would hope that when we're talking about social justice and who decides what's equitable, ultimately the victims, I don't like to use the term victims, but the people who've, who've had the harm done to them should have the loudest voice in what that repair looks like. Um, and so I would hope in this case that it was black women then in the EFF who had the loudest voices to determine what this outcome was. I wonder, Lovelyn, if it was just exclusively black women who, quote unquote, were the victims here, because this has really been positioned and largely perceived as a racial issue, even beyond a gender issue. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a binary question, Sami. I think that it's both, right? So I think that um, there is the reality that it is a racial issue, given the fact that there's a particular history of black hair in general being denigrated, being devalued, um, and that further then impacts the ways in which we construct our social understanding of what is beautiful, what is attractive, what is acceptable, uh, what is desirable, etc. Right? So I think that, yes, this is very much a race issue. But then I think the next layer of the conversation is then to evaluate who is most affected by notions of desirability and, uh, and uh, what is normal and what's acceptable when it comes to appearance, right? And much of the research that we know around, you know, issues around attraction and appearance and body image are issues that are very much gendered because women in society are generally the ones who are expected to present themselves in particular ways and perform their identity in particular ways that will be acceptable 
not only to a male gaze, but also to a white gaze. And this is why it's important then for us to talk about intersectionality, right? The fact that when you exist at a particular intersection of identity, and maybe in this case we're talking race and gender, there's a particular experience that you will have as a black woman with an afro or the black woman with dreadlocks that might not necessarily be ascribed to a black man who carries the same, right? Because the expectations about who needs to um, do more of the labor when it comes to your physical appearance and your attractiveness, that expectation is not the same for the different genders. So I think it is important for us to acknowledge it is a race issue, absolutely. It is also a gender issue, and I think it lands in a very particular way for black women. Now let's talk then about the second aspect of uh, what justice is in this particular constant, uh, in this particular instant. You talk about uh, repairing the damage done in a just and fair way. The distribution of a 10,000 minimum of 10,000 sanitary towels as well as sanitizers uh, to quote unquote um, uh, you know disadvantaged areas uh, by Unilever. The pulling of Tresemme products for 10 days from the shelves. Is that action just and equitable? Is that action the right action for redress? Yeah. So <laughs> there's two ways to assess this, right? For me, the first thing is to say, are, are we in agreement of what the harm is that was done? So when we look at the, the hair, the Kicks hair advert, and what that um, advert was messaging to our children, to us, it follows a long history right, of denigrating, devaluing, um, um, dismissing the particular experiences of black people and very much in this case of black women. So this follows a long trajectory of positioning some of us as less than, as deviant from, because we don't meet some of the standards that are um, arbitrarily set up by a system of white supremacy. So then we ask this solution that we've come to, does it actually meet that harm? And I would say no, right? So on the one hand, we can give credit to the EFN, EFS and say, actually, they took it so seriously, they kicked up a fuss, they were brought to the boardroom table, and that they, they actually could get something, right? So we could take that approach of, like, oh, no, go. you know, they no, go. they got something. We can take that approach. But the other side for me is, so let's think about how do you repair this harm? The first question that I would want to ask is, so when we think about what is normative in a space like Cook, like Unilever, like Tresemme, even now, even though these things will be taken off the shelf, what's that going to mean for the internal culture at these companies? Are the black women in those companies going to now suddenly have more voice? Are the black women in those companies going to see themselves in positions of authority where they can actually influence not only what the standard policies and procedures are, but also what is valued, what is considered valuable, and what is considered worth listening to and not dismissing, right? So I would need to see some sort of internal redress within those organizations to truly demonstrate that it's not just the cosmetic, take it off the shelf for a few weeks, distribute some pads, it's not just the once-off step, but what is the sustained energy that's going to come out of this? Right, so rethinking how we organize power in these institutions. The second thing that I would want to know is what are you then going to do for black children? Right, because this message is not just a message that affects black adult women. We're talking about black children in our schools. Just four years ago, Zuleika Patel was busy protesting because they wouldn't let her have her her effort at Pretoria Girls, right? Even now with the school racism issues, many children are complaining about, um, about the rules that exist in their schools about hair, right? So all that Cooks has done as a large corporation that has some sort of social and economic power, they put their power behind this very damaging idea. So what is Cooks, what is Unilever, what is Tatane putting in place for black children to actually affirm their identity, either by rethinking their ads, by actually bringing uh, some of these consumers into the room when decisions are made around marketing, around products, around testing, right? So are you reshaping the voices that you're bringing into the room, again, as a way of sustaining uh, this energy, right? So thinking about how we fix what we've done to children in this country. And then thirdly, 
then we can talk about, okay, now what are we going to distribute, right? So, yes, it's great you're distributing pairs, but maybe let's think about what are the systemic issues that limit the voice of black women in this country, of colored in this country? What are the systemic issues that limit access financially um, uh, in terms of their, their sexuality, etc., and then think about the types of programs that you can put in place. So I would have liked to see scholarships, hands down. I would have liked to see some sort of scholarships because we know that when it comes to education, so many of our black girl children are on the back foot. I would have liked to see something about some form of accelerated leadership programs that are deeply invested in actually recentering African leadership practices and norms that can actually empower uh, and equip many of the black women in corporate spaces, but even black girls in school spaces, on how to navigate their own self-awareness in these spaces. So I guess what I'm saying to Tammy is that, yes, we've gotten something, but these are just concessions, and I don't see these concessions lasting beyond just the action of, I mean, how much is 10,000 pounds for a corporation like Click? I, I, so I would have liked to see something more systemic here. I must say, Lovelyn, I've seen some great points that you've brought up there. We'll leave our conversation at that today. And I guess the summary being that it's a great start, but by no means should it be an end uh, to these kind of uh, discussions and to interrogating the real issues and the extent of the damage done and also identifying exactly what the damage is. Thank you so much uh, for your input and your insights this afternoon, Lovelyn. Very much appreciated. Um, that's a social justice strategist there, Lovelyn Nwam.